Hey, I'm uh, Ale Stefancic. I'm from Slovenia, Europe. It's a sunny spring day outside, and I'm really glad to talk to you, Nathan, about this Life Sounds Summit event that is coming up. Well, you are in a very interesting position, which is that I think you have not only attended every Live Sound Summit, but you've taught at every Live Sound Summit, correct? I think so. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be my third time now, so I'm really cool. excited to do that. Yeah. yeah, I'm using this big word like every as though we've had like hundreds of them, but <laughs> there's been two of them. So you've attended to, you've taught it to, and so you have a, kind of an inside perspective of like how the thing works. Um, and I've really enjoyed uh, working on it with you because you're always really excited to like see someone or learn something. So I, I thought we'd just start off. Maybe you could reflect a little bit about your experience from the last year. Maybe you could share with us maybe what's one thing you learned or, or one of your takeaways from 2019. Oh, 2019 was a great, great lifestyle summit. Um, I really enjoyed the keynote um, that was given by uh, John Burton, I think. It was on the first day and then the second day by Robert Scoble. I, maybe I have sort of... Uh, scrambled up the days but uh those no, that's two, okay. so uh, the keynote was darren de la soul but john burton did definitely present soon after okay yeah okay yeah it was a it was a morning session so i i remember john's uh john's session he when he was talking about um you know what his next move was once um and on the sad news came that the project prodigy the band who he was working with uh lost their lead singer um and then he described his path from you know working with prodigy to then going on tour with this pop band or pop uh, actor um pop act that was uh basically hitting the the stages from the uk talent show i think something like that and it was a really exciting moment um just because it showed us that we never know how this uh audio life will treat us um and uh, that we should be ready for anything uh but there were tons of really really great sessions uh, last year and um i'm super positive that this year it's going to be even bigger and even better it was a great story because he went from working with one of the biggest most well-known bands in the world touring arenas to what he was calling a new band uh that was playing smaller shows my favorite moment in that story is when um, he was mixing monitors with an iPad and the drummer started asking him for some changes and he said, here, you can do it, and just handed him the iPad and then somehow changed his role from front of house mixer and uh, stage sound mixer to just front of house mixer. And then I think he said for the rest of the tour, they just mix their own monitors because they're all you know younger people who have no fears around using technology so they all knew how to do it already and he didn't have to explain it to them <laughs> sure yeah i mean it's 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 really interesting when you start listening to other people's stories from the road and um that's basically like the best thing i love about life on summit is a lot of people just you know coming together and sharing their experience it's like um a campfire experience you know where we each go and around and say, okay, this is what I've learned and this is what happened to me. And, um, and we all are really, really better for it. So, yeah. Um, Alice, who are you looking forward to seeing at this year's Live Sound Summit? Uh, well, you know, the, the four greats, the Dave Ratt, Robert Scoble, then we have Pooch and uh, Bob McCarthy, um, all uh, people that I really admire and, um, look up to. Um, I think their sessions are going to be going to be great. And then, of course, uh, sessions by Stephen Pavlik are always great because I'm very interested in RF and coordination in, of wireless systems. I think uh, we're going to have a really, really uh, strong presentation by Volker Schmidt, um, who, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be talking about how he sets up all of the RF and wireless systems for the European Song Contest. Um, which Why are you is so interested the... in RF? Hi, I think it's like one of the things that um, I started discovering really late. And it's something that I 
don't have a, a great grasp on, but I'm right now in the process of uh, learning about it and uh, hearing about it more and more. And uh, I'm I'm a monitoring engineer most of the time for like 90% of my time. So RF is a big chunk of what I do. So understanding it is crucial for my work. Um, and I think this is like, I've been studying mixing for uh, a long, long time. I've uh, been studying the plugins and the consoles and the workflows. Uh, and then the RF stuff sort of got left behind. And now it's, you know, it, it's moment. It has its five minutes of glory. And I'm really, really looking forward to people uh, talking about it and explaining things. Because I, I think there's still a lot of misconceptions um, about, you know, how this, this stuff actually works. Uh, and I just want to unveil a lot of the mysteries um, that are uh, surrounding this topic. And I'm really looking forward to all of the presenters that will do that for me. Sure. Yeah. Me too. Um, and you're teaching again at this year's Live Sound Summit. So, um, mm -hmm. have you already decided on your topic? Do you have a title for the session? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking about the things I had to learn when I became a monitoring engineer for IEM, so for in ear monitors, because I think this is such a specific topic um, that nobody actually touches. Um, and we all tend to discuss like front of house engineering, because then we get to hear what the front of house engineer actually does. But the monitoring engineer for people wearing IEMs, it's a completely different game. It's a very personal experience. Um, and I'm, you know, relatively new to this game. I started doing that about four years ago. I got into uh, mixing linear monitors really heavily for um, the largest rock band in Slovenia. And we moved the entire band from, you know, performing with wedges um, to in-ear systems. And um, I had to set up the gear, I had to set up the system, I had to take care of the guys in the mixes, and I had to learn a lot of things while doing it. Um, and I really don't think there's like a definite, uh, definite uh, place that, that would provide all of the information that, you know, budding engineers that get sucked into this IEM world would go into and say, okay, this is all that I need to know. Um, so I hope to provide a bit of information on exactly how to approach, you know, doing that. It's going to be based on my personal experience and I'm really glad to uh, share it with people and I hope it helps uh, somebody on their path. Sure, so you went through this transition from mixing mostly monitor, mostly stage monitors to mostly IAMs and, um, Lots of other people could be going through that pretty soon, so this could be helpful to them. Yeah, I think IEMs are um, becoming more accessible and are being used by more and more uh, artists. So engineers have to be ready for that, especially if you're interested in mixing monitors. This is something that you will have to learn about. Um, and there's not le really a lot of resources out there that will be that would be sort of congested together and. and in one space, you have to go on your own and sort of scour the web and see, um, you know, what the, the contents are that might be uh, useful to you. So um, by just talking about my path, I hope to sort of bring all of this together. And we'll talk about gear, we'll talk about the psychology of it, and we'll talk about um, how to get a band from wedges to IEMs, which is something that, you know, a lot of people struggle with um, in the monitoring and monitor engineering world. Um, so yeah, we'll discuss how I approached it and uh, what I needed to learn and what I think people should absolutely know about mixing IM. Um, so hopefully this will be something that will be interesting to uh, the viewers of Live Sound Summit. Cool. Well, can you can you give me a taste of that? Like, what makes mixing IM so hard? What is one thing that I'll learn during your session um, that is going to you know solve? one of the biggest problems I'm going to run into when I start mixing IEMs? I think it's, it has to do with a mental switch from the monitoring engineer. Um, the first and like the first thing that I want to talk about when we talk about IEMs with any monitoring engineer that says, Hey, how, how do we do this? Is I try to instill this one simple fact is it's all about safety. You are now in charge of keeping 
the hearing of you know everybody who is wearing IEMs that you are mixing safe and under control and in an environment where you know there is absolutely no chance of feedback, um, there's no chance of them you know hitting a signal that might affect their ears in such a way that might damage them. Um, so getting that mindset is something that you really really have to. Uh, start with from the beginning, from the get-go. And once you have that, then we can talk about everything else. But if there's one thing that I want to instill on other monitoring engineers going into IEM is, you know, let's think about safety. Let's think about all of the procedures that you have to do in terms of having everybody safe on stage. Um, and uh, that's maybe one thing that we will talk about. But then, of course, we will talk about gear because everybody wants to talk about gear. Um, and what <laughs> systems to choose and which earphones and how to maintain them, how to clean them. That's maybe one of the uh, lesser known um, uh, stuff that we have to do. Uh, you know, everybody thinks about moving faders and uh, running packs and stuff like that. But, you know, you have to be in charge of also cleaning and taking care of, um, of those uh, earphones and how to do that. What are the best approaches? What are the tools that you might be using? Um, and we were talking about a bit of, about, you know, signal management and, and RF and the psychology of things, which I think is something that we tend to sort of ignore in these situations, but it's super, super important. Um, yeah. So hopefully something that, you know, will interest a, a lot of people. Cool. Well, Alish, I'm looking forward to it. So if you're watching this and you are interested in hearing Alish's talk during Live Sound Summit, you can go to Live Sound Summit 2020. That's sounddesignlive.com. I know that's a mouthful. If you just go to sounddesignlive.com, you'll see that I have a little banner across the top of every page that has a link to the, the summit page itself. And once you get to that page, you can either click uh, book my spot and that'll like walk you through how to sign up for Alice's talk, or there's a menu across the top and you can choose speakers and then look for Alice Stefancic. It's the one with all the funny characters in the name and you'll be able to pick your spot. So. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Alice is going to be there along with 30 other uh, teachers that, that I'm looking forward to seeing. So hope to see you there. Thanks, Alice. Yeah, take care. Bye.